Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So sometime back in April of last year, I reviewed the 72 colored colored pencils from Urtex, but today we are going to be looking at the 126 colored version of the colored pencils also by Urtex as they have sent that for me today to review for you guys. So let's take a quick look. So the colored pencils have a wide range of colors to choose from. They also have a nice resistance to breaking due to their thicker, more durable leads, which is really nice. Also, they can layer up like quite a few layers when coloring, which makes it really nice if you want to do more detailing or you want to do more blending or anything like that with the colored pencils. Um, also, they come in this kind of vertical stacked arrangement for the colored pencils, which I prefer over the kind of like horizontal tins that a lot of these pencils come in. Um, it's easier for me to see the variety of colors and you can see that each of the pencils itself is kind of like a round barrel with kind of silver font, um, which has the color code as well as the color name on them. So Artex also made some changes compared to their previous set of 72 colored pencils. So in the new stock of 72 colored pencils alongside with their 126 pack, they did make some changes of like the foam container now having individual slots to hold up their pencils rather than this kind of uh, merged version which kind of made it harder to organize your pencils if you remove too many at once which i find that change to be really nice they also match the barrel color a little bit closer to their lead color which i think is a lot more helpful especially if you're somebody who looks at the barrel color rather than the tip of the pencil when choosing your colors you can see that both of these are lemon yellow but the bottom one is the new one and the upper one was the old version so I'm going to be also doing a little bit of uh, testing on a scrap piece of paper. I'm not going to do swatches for you guys because I usually don't do swatches of colored pencils and 126 pencils is just a lot to go through. Um, so highly recommend that if you ever try any kind of medium or anything that has color, definitely do your own swatches because um, printed swatches oftentimes are not going to be as accurate and test it on paper that's similar to what you're going to be working on so you get a better um, idea of how the pencils um, perform. So just for catching up sake, um, the new changes that they have made compared to their old 72 set is that apparently there was also too many yellow tones so i believe in the future their new stock will also have i think two less yellow pencils and they're gonna add a blue and a purple so from what i've seen i believe they're gonna make another set along with these pencils so that you can just add it to your 72 set of pencils but the 126 does have a nice range of similar colors from the 72 set plus a lot of mid-tone ranges to help you have those transition into anything that you want to kind of blend so i'm showing you guys a brief little session of me blending in the colors i don't usually press this hard with pencil crayons anymore but um once we get into today's illustration i'm going to show you guys kind of the extent that the blending capability of the art text color pencil has i talked about this in the previous video that i find that their pencil core is very similar to prismacolor premiers and prismacolor scholars where there's kind of like a happy middle ground of being able to blend really nicely without having the breakage um, similar to the premieres which i definitely prefer and definitely it's a set that i would recommend if you're looking to get into colored pencil because it is a bit more affordable than the prismacolor premieres so today i'm going to be working on the strathmore bristol paper and i've done marker drawing on this before and it's a much thicker version of what i would consider like cardstock um you can see the bleed through is not as drastic compared to such thinner paper. So we are going to be working on the Bristol paper for today so that I can take advantage of the smooth surface and don't have to worry about uh, ruining the paper by pressing so hard with the pencils. So I have a sketch done with the Pilot Color Eno of Hiro Amagi from Ensemble Stars. At the time of filming this, it was actually his birthday. So it was on January 4th, I believe. But when you guys are seeing this, it's going to be a few days after. So it's probably not going to be as relevant. But happy birthday to Hiro. Um, let me think. 
So yeah, I did the sketch with the pilot color Eno with the idea that I am going to be doing no line work um, with a pen or anything like that. We're just going to go straight in with the colored pencils. I am going to try my best to take out as many as the pink lines as I can so that they don't disrupt um, any of the colors present in the illustration. So I'm starting off with the face and I'm starting off with some really light layers at first and just trying to build up the color because at this point I wasn't sure if I wanted to go the same route as I usually do which is um, kind of really light build up of color and kind of leaving the texture to be very prominent but if you guys want to see kind of that version you can check out the 72 version that I did last year I'll leave it in the description so you guys can see how I build up color that way um, and yeah today I am going to be trying my best to go a little bit more harder with the pencil so we're going to be burnishing quite a bit um, with some of the lighter colors or blending the colors in such a way that a lot of people who do like realism pieces i feel like they would usually do this technique anyways and you can kind of take advantage of the blending capabilities of the pencil so one thing about these pencils is that they're not as waxy as the prismacolor premiers in my opinion but their blending capability is pretty similar um and I think it's kind of nice that they have such a nice range of mid-tones too because I've seen like some other packs of colored pencils and they usually lack some of the colors where you're able to transition more easily and if they don't have a really nice um, way of being able to be blended as easily it's kind of hard blending a really light color and kind of a darker color together without having to you know carefully layering things up in a certain way to let that transition kind of like flow seamlessly so it's nice that they have a bunch of different mid-tones to kind of fill in those gaps so when I am kind of pressing a lot harder, I'm trying my best. I did this mostly for the skin and his hair and probably the left side of his body, less so than the right side and we'll get into that a little bit. But so how I kind of approached it was that you would do a few layers of being able to build up your color, adding a little bit of color variation if you need to, and then you're taking one of your colors for me it tends to be a mid-tone or lighter color to really burnish and blend those colors together and then after that I will go in and add some darker colors on top which is kind of really nice that they're able to layer so many different um, I guess like layers of colors without having slippage of where you're not able to produce like a mark on top of the colored pencil due to too many layers um, being built up and kind of getting that wax bloominess but like I said because this pencil doesn't have that much of that waxy feeling it's not as prominent seeing kind of like the wax blooming at some part because I'm pressing quite hard you're gonna see a lot of like the shinier areas too because of where I'm burnishing and I'll show you guys a little bit later as well as probably when I move the paper around you're gonna see sometimes Hito's hair or his face looks like it's really shiny and that's because of how hard I'm burnishing onto the paper you can also see that I have a scrap piece of paper underneath so my desk does have a little bit of a texture and usually if I'm working with like thinner paper I'd be worried that the desk texture would be appearing on the paper so I like to have a thicker piece of paper or some other surface underneath but I'm also using that paper as a scratch pad kind of to allow myself to pick colors and test if that's the color I would like to use because like I said I'm not the type to do color swatches for pencil crayons because it's harder for me to feel the need to do 126 swatches for colored pencils where usually for the most part if I look at the lead most likely it's safe for me to know what color it's going to produce for the most part and I think Artex did a pretty good job at matching the barrels and the lead this time around there are some that are still a little bit off um, and I know there's a difficulty of being able to match those but for the most part, I'm glad that they listened to feedback and they've made those changes, which is really nice. So talking about the illustration a little bit, let's ignore his hands. So I actually added Hiro's hands last minute um, without planning out the body. So the first 
hand that I did was the one on the bottom, which I kind of want it to be closer to the person rather than to Hiro, which I realized I didn't give it enough context. So it just looks like he has a gigantic hand and really like spidey fingers. That that kind of makes sense. It just looks really off. And the other hand is also just too large in general. That's just a general mistake that I just did. Um, so other than that, actually really had a fun time working with the colored pencils so you can see that when i was working with the golds i decided to show you guys a little bit more of a close-up but i was able to layer up some blues some purples and reds um, sometimes more of a teal color so that we can get kind of more of that goldish brassier color instead of just strictly like orange and brown with the yellow so it was kind of nice to do that and then you can see that I would layer a dark blue I would add purple I would add a dark brown on top to kind of get that more darker color um, if that makes sense kind of more closer to black so for Hiro's outfit um, I was using two references and one had more of a teal color which you can see I'm adding in uh, towards the top of this little part of his lapel but the other photo I had had more of a dark blue, almost like muted black color. So I was kind of picking and choosing whether or not I wanted to be more accurate to one reference than the other. But once we get to the right side, I was feeling super tired of just coloring because pressing quite hard takes a toll on my hand, which is why I usually opt for the other option of like slowly layering up the colors really lightly and let like letting that texture kind of come through because usually when i've done kind of like this burnishing technique where you're really pressing a lot harder to blend the colors or trying to get that nice color payoff where the colors are kind of like covering more of the surface so you're really getting that smooth transition as well as just like really bold vibrant colors i usually did that for only realism pieces um, but I think with the 72 set video, I did a version of Wanu where I was just building up color slowly and it turned out really nice. But I do think that the finish for this does look really nice with the color vibrancy. Actually really didn't talk about that too much. The vibrancy of the pencils are absolutely wonderful. That's what I really love about these pencils too, is not only that you can blend them super well, there's less breakage, but the color payoff is really nice. Uh, I think pretty much all the colors I was using were very vibrant, very um, easy to use, as well as that they're super easy to layer. So you can see that I was able to kind of layer up the pencils in such a way to create the different shadows on top of one another, especially for the ribbons, which I think is my most favorite part um, for the most part. Apologies, I actually forgot. I was actually doing the this portion of the filming when I was on call with my friends and we were planning like an outing. We we're planning to get Bingsu later this week. Um, actually, no, this is last week as well as I was doing some things for my mom. So I was searching a bunch of things and I forgot to cut that out. Apologies about that. Mm, I think for the most part, if I'm going to be using colored pencils or pencil crayons, whichever you prefer saying, um, probably would gravitate using these ones a little bit more. I do have my Prismacolor Premiers in a nice little case now rather than the tin. Because like I said, I do like the vertical format that they have for their box, like the one for Artex. The only problem, I should have probably stated this at the very beginning, is the fact that it might be a problem if you're accidentally gonna grab the box from the top if that makes sense or only grabbing one portion of the box because I feel like the other half can slip out um I don't know if it's possible to put like little pieces of velcro on each side so that the little halves can stay together but I do like the idea that they're separate as well because it's easy for you to line up your pencil not in such like a blocky way. It's still in that vertical thinner box which is nice for you to see because they're kind of like on more or less like rows of three so it's very easy for you to spot your colors. Because the thing I don't like about like horizontal tins is the fact that you have to like stack your tins and they're in trays and that you would have to lay them all out for you to see all your colors. So I definitely like the vertical format, but I definitely think I have to be a little bit careful that I can't grab the box from the side without accidentally 
maybe not supporting the bottom, <laughs> otherwise I might drop them all. Um, I didn't have that problem with the 72 set because if I grab it from the side, it's only one section, so there's not really an issue. I also think what my gripe is about it, it's very nitpicky, so I don't think it's like a usually a problem. Um, but for the most part, I always love Artex's packaging. I always think that they do such a good job of making the packaging very much um, like space friendly, if that makes sense. Like you're able to contain your colors and your stuff in the box while having it function as like a stand of some sort. I believe their alcohol markers are similar in a sense that you store them in a similar way, but the lid acts kind of like a kickstand where it's able to prop up your box so that you have it at an angle, which is really nice, um, rather than it being fully flushed horizontal. This is easier for you to view. So I do like the fact that they designed their boxes in a very like meticulous way um, with the design and having functionality together, which is really nice. Um, so in terms of the illustration, Hiro, yeah, I had a lot of fun drawing him and I think my favorite part is the ribbon portion, especially where the gold metal part of the ends of the ribbon are. I just had a lot of fun doing it and like I said, it's been a while since I've colored like this, which I feel gets a little bit closer of being able to reference closer to realism in terms of shading and stuff. I feel like when I do the lighter versions, I'm taking a lot of liberties of being stylized. That being said, I think the last stretch of the illustration became a lot weaker. So as I got closer to the right side and I did the clothing underneath the lapel, so we're talking about like the vest-ish area, I was getting really tired of pressing down hard to blend the different colors and trying to make sure that the white of the page was mostly being covered. So my hand was very much just feeling very weak and kind of getting to the cramping area kind of thing. So if you can, highly recommend you don't do these in one session and kind of just plan it out as like multiple sessions so that you don't break your hand or your wrist or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I think I tried my best to use as much as the color variety as I could. I feel like I always use so many like greens recently or like yellowy greens-ish that I wanted to do something more towards like yellow, blue, and red, which Hito's outfit kind of really worked out well. I did notice that their set of 126, I don't think it has a super big amount of greens, which I don't think is too much of a problem because you can mix the colors. So I, I am happy that they expanded their blues a lot more and I don't know, I found it very helpful. You can see my mess of a desk whenever I use colored pencil looks like this because I'm constantly just pulling out new colors rather than leaving them all in the box. Um, but he, here is Hiro, or Hito. Um, I didn't do a background for this one because like I said, my hand was getting very tired and if I did do a background, I probably would have wanted to do that first. I've seen people also layer it with markers, which seems like a good way if you want to knock out the white as well. Um, but yeah, here he is kind of did my best to cover as much as the surface as I could for him so that he could really stand out from the white of the paper. Um, yeah, I thought he looks really cute and the color payoff, like I said, is really great. Let's ignore the hands a little bit. Um, yeah, I think he turned out pretty cute. Like I said, the colors are very vibrant and you know, very easy to blend. You can layer up quite a bit and the color range I actually really do like. So thank you again to Artex for sending me these colored pencils for me to try out. It's always been lovely to use these colored pencils as I do use these 72 color pencils from time to time, whether or not it's for sketchbook work or just um, helping to embellish maybe some paintings or any traditional work. And like I said, I wanted to show you guys the little bit of shiny-ish area. You can see where I did the most burnishing or building up of the color. And there's some areas that have absolutely none just because I didn't really burnish it, even though there is a little bit of color there. But yeah, that is Hiro. And I think I showed you guys a little bit of what my colored pencil state looks like. Some colors I had to use a lot more, but for the most part, I did not really have any breakage for the leads, which is really nice because um, it gets really frustrating sharpening over and over and over again when a lead keeps breaking due to you accidentally dropping the pencil. So I'm glad the core is much more thicker and durable than some other brands. Um, yeah, highly recommend you guys check out the links in the description if you're interested in buying the 126 color set. And I think that's it from me. Uh, thank you again to Artex for sending me the pencils and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!